If you ever driven Route 95 through Connecticut, chances are you've crossed the Thames River between Groton and New London. While crossing the river, if you happen to be looking back towards the east bank, you would have noticed just inside the 95 bridge sits a New London submarine base, which holds the distinction of being the birthplace of our country's submarine force. Originally a Navy Yard, it was converted to a sub base in 1916, and by 1959, New London had become the largest submarine base in the world. With easy and deep access to Long Island Sound, the mouth of the Thames was a natural fit for the East Coast's only sub base, as well as a hub for boating activity carrying tourists and residents to Fishers Island and Orient Point on Long Island. In addition to nuclear subs, ferry services, and merchant ships, Commercial and recreational fishing boats are a big part of the Groton and New London waterfront scene, enjoying a healthy fishery all throughout Long Island Sound. On today's show, I was joining Captain Mike Roy as we headed out in search of big bluefish and striped bass in and around Fishers Island, which sits towards the eastern end of Long Island Sound. Right in front of us, I think it's right, going to blow up. Right in front, yep, and to the side, right into the island there. Oh, they're crashing right there. I have to be coming through there. There we go. I'm on. Out the back? Right behind the boat, yep. Well, there's fish all over the place. He's like just pods. Yeah. He's got the fly rod going over there. Oh, pop them. Bit me off. If you don't get them right in the corner, they uh, yeah, it's gone. They'll bite you. Yeah. <laughs> They're moving quick. That's for sure. Yeah, they are. There they are, straight, straight, straight ahead. ahead. Go for it. Oh, just tight. Got him. Right nice. there. We're in uh, the dumplings, and there's a whole bunch of bait and fish work in the bait here. Look at the fish crashing over here. So guys, we left out of Groton. Kind of a gentleman's day here, afternoon bite. Great rod. That's a lemon glass, uh, seven foot. It's an XL inshore. Um, it's an excellent rod because it's got a soft tip where you can throw the soft plastics, but it still has enough backbone to handle the fish. So we got a nice fish. Hopefully we get to see this guy. You know what's fun about this, Mike, is the light tackle, man, makes it just so much fun. Oh, it's great. Even if it's a smaller size fish, you still get an excellent bite and uh, makes it makes it a lot of fun. You go back 20 years ago and you look at the tackle back then, everything was a, it was a broomstick. Yeah. You know? But the performance in some of this light gear is every bit as good, if not better, than some sure. of those broomsticks, but just half the weight. That's a D Daiwa Ballistic 3000. It puts out plenty of drag with the braided line on there. You have, you know, it holds 300 yards, a 20 pound braid, and you can handle really big fish on, on a light rod. Just There's color gold. there. It is a big blue fish. The thing that's tough about blues is they have really soft jaw tissue. Yeah, that's exactly right. So they're right. hard to, uh, you know, we're going to let this guy go. Um, great, great nice. job right there. It's funny this guy took off with that quick burst which at first I thought that might be that Albi, but then the way he stayed down, the big blues will actually act sometimes like the bass. You know, blues are an outstanding game fish. As far as fight, they are one of the toughest fighting fish. If you can get this fish on a fly. Oh, that's an outstanding fight, That right fight, here is yeah. like, you know. Even on a light rod, I mean, that is a great fighting fish. That's a solid 12, 13 yeah, pound that blue is a fish big right blue. there, yeah. Let's get them back in the yep. water. We, good start, big nice. slob blue. You know they're eating well, it's great bait down yeah. there. If you want, maybe we'll, we'll get another fish or two that you want to shoot down Let's and do maybe that. we'll find the albies down there. That'll be perfect. But well, they're moving quick. They are. I'm just underneath you on the right, so. There we go. Tight. We like the rough water today. Yeah, they That's do. For sure. Making headway on him? No, he's in the current. I can't budge. <laughs> the tide is actually coming in right now, uh, which means that the current's moving west. 
Um, and the uh, wind is out of the west, so we have the current moving this way, the wind blowing this way. Just makes them stand right up. Yep. I definitely say this is not five to seven out of the northeast. No, they were a little <laughs> off. What would you say about 12, 13? That's exactly out of the what southwest. I would say. 12 to 13 out of the southwest, which is the prevailing wind down here, isn't it? The it southwest. Is. In the summertime, especially the typical wind pattern through the summer, you know, you get the southwest breeze will pick up in the afternoon, and then at night it usually lays and flattens yeah, out. Right. So it's really great night fishing around here for bass, especially in the summer. Obviously in the fall you're going to get stronger winds and you start getting more uh, northerly winds as you get later in, in the season. There we go. Open up, fella. Okay. Fat bluefish. <laughs> and here's what he's eating. A little a bunker. more substantial bunker. Yeah. Shall we make, make another pass through one? there? We'll just go down a little way. In addition to Groton, New London, and Fishers Island being well known for its boating activity, this area is steeped in history dating back to the colonial days with the entrance of the Thames River playing a vital role in our country's development. With Fort Griswold on the Groton side of the Thames and Fort Trumbull on the New London side, both worked in tandem during the Revolutionary War to defend the port of New London and protect the supply lines from imposing British forces. In more recent years, the Groton New London Business District has seen steady growth due to the area becoming a major transportation center and gateway for folks moving between Boston and New York by train and New England and Long Island by ferry. With so much access to the water, it was easy to see why the Groton New London area had become a prime location for fishermen to set out from in search of stripers all throughout eastern Long Island Sound. Oh, that was a fish right there. See, see that? It? Get in there and just get yeah, right in there. Oh, oh come on. I'm is right he here. It? I got, got him. him. And they're eating peanuts. Boy, this is You get a peanut on that? Yeah, I got two on there. That guy's swirling on the surface like a... I think it's a bass, right? Oh, oh. I just threw it. Whatever it is, we're going to find out. That's definitely a bass. Yep. Didn't mark it? All right. All right, let's get back in there. I didn't really get a good set on that guy. I thought it was a bass. It definitely gave it a swirl on the surface and popped it. They just blew up right in there. How much water are we in, Mike? Uh, about seven feet. You got beautiful water right now. You got a big surf that's coming in from the storm that just passed through. And uh, these big fish, oh, look at the swirl right there. There he is. Got him? Yep. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid it may be a bluefish. Oh, really? Let me just. He's acting like one. Maybe not. Beautiful fish. I'm gonna walk him right over your shoulder. He's just about done. Look at the colors on this guy. On the Albi snack. Oh. Right there at that 28, 30 inch fish. Yeah. Say so it's probably about 12, 12 pounder. Yeah, nice fish. And he just took that right in the corner of the mouth. Well, I'll tell you what, it's when you when we are throwing the Albi snack and uh, great lure, soft plastic. With a little bit of wind coming over the top of Napa Tree here, you can't really toss it. Mike made the decision to kind of move in closer. You got to be real careful because with the hurricane that just went through off the coast, you get some big breakwater in here. So it's a little tough with the wind here today, but when we do this walk the dog action, the left hand, the hand that's reeling, is just picking up the slack line. And every time the line is coming tight, I'm twitching. And what it's doing is, it's causing the spook to go in a zigzag, right, left, right, left. And that's what draws in the reaction strike. And you'll get a lot of hits, a lot of aggressive swirls on this. Um, I think the mistake you see a lot of people make with it is they, they try to work it like a pop. They're hanging tight in the trough on the beach, so we're trying to stay out of the way of these guys and also navigate through the rocks. It's not making it easy to uh, get in there, but the nice thing with uh, the spooks, we can get a pretty good cast off. They are, like you said, they're dead between the two of us. You know, and you, like with you, these, these uh, seven and a half to eight foot rods, there's the lamin glass rods, and you can get 
a pretty good distance. Um, I feel like I could put it on the beach if I had yeah, to. Yeah, with a slightly longer rod. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there he is. I heard that one. Another thing when you're spooking is um, you don't want to set on the visual. So that's the one mistake I see a lot of people make is they set the hook when they see the fish. You rip the plug away from the fish. So what you want to do is hold off and don't set until you actually feel the fish hit the plug. Generally, I strike three times, and when they hit close like that, I set almost to the tip, almost hitting the water. So if the fish, if it does pull out of the fish's mouth, it'll stay low and it won't come flying back high and hit you in the face. Hey Chris, these are really nice looking fish though, really. These are uh, beautiful, bright. fresh, clean, they just moved in. So we'll use the boga grip, make it a little easier to handle with uh, the two sets of treble on there. Nice looking fish and they're really, beautiful. really hitting aggressively. Well, you see those fish coming out of the water like that, you know that they're active. Right there, right there, right, right there. there. See him? Oh, we just saw a big concentration of bass blow up just in the surf. Really cool. One of the guys on shore hooked up with a nice fish. Oh, come nice. on, come on. Got him. Got him. That was awesome. Right on the surface. Uh, that was nice. Look at the oh fish in the surface. Look. look at them blowing up out oh, of the water. Wow. That is awesome. That is just going crazy right there. So I was throwing the spook there, and it just came up and smoked it. Missed it the first time. Came back around and grabbed it. Nice fish. Saw a few of those bass come flying straight out of the Did water. Did you see that? Right out of the water, fishing just off of Napa Tree. Would this be called Napa Tree Point? Napa Tree Point, yep. Coming up on the magic hour right here with that last hour of light, to me, it's just always been great. That's it. I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. Nice. Shoot back here up and let's, yeah. let's see if we can make another pass through and then maybe we'll uh, we'll work this and then and then once this stops, we'll go and uh, we'll set up with the eels for uh, try for a bigger fish here. Sounds good. There it is. Got him? Yep. Nice. All right. That's right. I'm going to get one more set, like you said, because I feel like it was. Oh, oh blue. Oh, big blue, huh? I want to get your plug back now. <laughs> Look at that sunset. Oh. Get off. Yeah, he popped. A lot of the bluefish have really soft mouths. You'll rip the clip clean oh, off of those easily, things, you know? Yeah. We got a little bit of sun left up yep. here. Maybe make yep. one more pass on that corner. Shoot back up and let's yep. let's see if we can make another pass through. Uh, once this stops, we'll go and uh, we'll set up with the eels. With the sun setting on some great top water action, it was time to head for the south side of Fisher's Island and set up for the nighttime bite using live eels. What you get here is it's almost like a current break from the main current. Fish will come in here. You get a lot of bait that pours in here. Tight. Beautiful fish. fish. Yeah, yeah I love him higher out. He's a little bit green. Beautiful fish. Whoa. Whoa, easy, fella. Easy, easy, Bill. I'm going to let him go for a second. He's still angry. I got him on this one. All right. They are tough to grab when they're green like that. Yeah, they are. Beautiful All fish, right. Mike. Beautiful fish, huh? Team, Look at that guy. Size fish or so? Gorgeous yeah. fish, yeah. We got one of those glorious days in early October. Post Northeaster we had over the weekend. I'm going to put this guy back in. This guy's going to go right off. Beautiful fish, Mike. All right, nice. 
Awesome. Great job. Real fresh live eel. I'm gonna go off the bow here. Got him that time. There you go. He's too gasping for it. He's gonna get it. Yeah. Are you on too? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Doubled up. There's a lot of fish in here. It really is. Tons of fish, tons of bait. Yeah, they just they have a lot of energy. It's shallow. We're catching these fish in seven feet the of water. water. Tep, you said drop away, Six, were you like 64, 60, We're about 65 and a half right here. Yeah, so you know, that'll keep these fish real fresh. Yep. I always like to see a little bit of light before I pull this guy in because every once in a while you reach into a bluefish. This guy's definitely got bigger shoulders to him. I'd say that Mike got me on that one. Nice size fish. He whacked it there. Fishing Fisher's Island for the last couple of hours, and we're really right now in a stretch where it's virtually every cast. Yeah, Either one of us are hooking yeah. up. There's a part of me that says we headed for the barn. There's another part of me that says, come February, these are the nights you dream yeah, of. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. We've also had several fish over 20 pounds now. Couple up to Yours was, uh, was approaching. Yeah. I think yours was approaching. I wish we'd gotten a weight on that thing, but I want to say that was in that 27, 28, 29 yeah, it class, was, you know? Yeah. Yep. Still not the 35s you had the other day. Yeah. Three 35s? Yeah, oh, over actually. They were bigger. Wow. Over 35, yeah. Yeah, there's some big fish that could mix in here and you could have a, a 50 pounder come in here. I just, I'm getting bumped right here. There we go. That's what we're talking about. This is why we're not leaving right now. Now that's a bigger fish. Oh, here we go. Got him? Yeah. Nice. Here he is. So we've been fishing in such thin water that we're casting into that a lot of these fish, as soon as you hook up, they have no place to go but out. And out means they're coming towards us. So you almost have to make sure you get a, a second pump on that. Yeah, he came right at me. Here we can see him now. Not a real big fish, but this is a great sign. We just moved up. Mike moved us up from our drift about another 50 yards further up. I like this. I think it's water we haven't fished. Absolutely. There are a lot of fish here. We're getting a lot of good action. I'm gonna just double check that eel, see if he's uh gotta rehook him. Yeah, we're gonna tuck him back to the eye, and maybe hit the other eye. He's got a clean one. And we could catch multiple fish in the same eel. That eel has a uh, bunch of hits on it. You can see it's all marked up. Looks like somebody took sandpaper. You can see all the hits along right it. Here. Yeah, a lot of these smaller fish right there, just bumping it right in the mid mid body. The big fish sometimes they come in and they want to eat. It's like you say, you get that thump. It just it's like they put on the feed bag and it's just time yeah. to eat. This guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out. I'm going to come through the other eye right now. Whoop. And that'll prevent uh, casting it off on the next cast. Yeah, exactly. Which get is nice usually the, the thing that happens. Thank yep. you. Yeah, you throw them yep. on both sides. Yep. You go ahead and cast first. I think right. there's some real nice fish right on the bow here. Tight? Yep, as soon as you hit the water. I think the fish are hanging pretty tight to the beach. Yeah, that's, yeah. They're nice. pretty good sized fish here. Yeah, I can tell by the line it's taken. Just gotta hope this guy stays out of the rocks here. Swimming at, he's coming at me now. You know what? He probably he went in so so far there. He's probably running out of water. He's probably nearly on the beach. We're using the FG knot with about an eight foot leader here. 
So we have a lot of protection if he does get near the rocks. This to me is my favorite fishing. Oh, me all too. Time. Yeah. Live eels at nighttime. Shallow give it to me water. over anything. Yep. We've caught fish as small as 20 inches. We have potential to catch a fish over 50 inches. You basically cover the entire spectrum. Got him. Nice fish. Gorgeous fish. That's yours, Cap. Hold all him. All right. You got him. Got him. Yep. That landed fish, on the yeah. water. Yep. And you were on. I must have hit him right on the nose. Beautiful fish, guys. Nice. Guys, that's why you get out here at night fishing live eels. Mike Roy. This eel has caught like five or six fish. Oh, there we go. Oh, you're on? Yeah, I'm tight. That's a nice fish right there. He's real green. Yeah, here. Come back here. Nice fish. He's going right into the motor here. I'm gonna walk him over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice That's fish. a nice fish right there. This is a skinny fish. He's he's well over 40 inches, but uh skinny one. About 28, 27, Show 28 this guy pounds, here. about 28 pounds. Hey guys, if you want to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. For Chris Meegan and Mike Roy, thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Let's get this guy back in the water, get him swimming. I think he's real healthy and green. Having caught and released bass to 30 pounds, the crisp, cool night air of October was telling us it was time to head for home. But with bass still slurping on the surface, it was hard to leave knowing this might be one of our last trips of the season.